It's an honor and a privilege to be in your presence. Yes, it is. We don't take it lightly. Oh, God. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. Say, I've tasted and seen. Tasted and seen. Yeah. Of the sweetest of loves. Yeah. And my heart becomes free. Yes, Lord. And my strength is unknown. Your presence, Lord. Your presence. Everybody cry out, Holy Spirit.
spirit you are comes God to be by your presence sing Holy Spirit say Hallelujah. Come flood us. Your glory. Yeah, to be by your presence. Oh, how we love. Oh, how we love. an action word as well. Something about the name of Jesus. Lift your hands all over this room. There's no name greater than the name of Jesus. Let all the other names fade away until that's only you. So God, we rejoice in that name. I'm so grateful that we have access to that name. The greatest name ever. Jesus Jesus, 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 oh, we love your name, God, we love your name, everybody say, let all the other names, can we declare that all over the room? Let all the other names fade away. Let all the other names Jesus, take your place. Jesus, take your place. Let's say that again. Let all the other names fade away. Hallelujah. Let all
Everybody say, God, I look to you, say, I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision to see things like you do. Say, God, I look to you. You're where my help comes from. Say, give me wisdom. You know just what to do. Just what to do, you know just what to do, you know just what to do. Everybody say, I will love you. together hallelujah our God reigns Greetings, 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 greetings in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I am so excited tonight because I have an amazing, a great man of God who has come all the way from New York to give you a word from on high. And I mean, I just can think about the time that we first met. I was just sharing with him how the Lord began to deal with me with Luke chapter 1 and how when Mary and Elizabeth first came and connected with one another again in, her, in the 
baby leaped in Elizabeth and it was and she was filled with the Holy Ghost. So I, I just wanted to let him know that day when he spoke that word in my life, my baby leaped and not knowing that I had to go out in the wilderness and prepare to birth him into his TV ministry. What you say? So I just want to introduce this man of God from New York, who is a great man of God. Um, it is a pleasure to introduce to some um, and uh, greet him to others and uh, all of those things. But I really, truly love this man of God and his wife. He has an awesome wife. And hello, Janice. Happy to see that you're watching on the other side. But I definitely want to introduce to you Prophet Dion Neesmith from New York. My God. Oh, thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this season. We thank you for this ship. And woman of God, I hear the Lord say that indeed it is a time of great transition for you. God says, no, that from your mother's womb, I have ordained thee to be a prophet to the nations. God says, get ready. I even see the scroll anointing in your hand. God says, there's books that I have given you and I am preparing for you to write unto this nation. God says, no, that I have never left you nor forsake you. For there are seasons where you thought God forgot you. There were seasons where you thought God left you. He said, I never left you and I never will. I even see those that have cursed you and those that have uh, shot darts in your back. And, and there were those that said you will never rise to be in the position that God has ordained for you. But God said, I called you and I have sent you forth. So God says, go and go where I am sending you in this season. For indeed, this is a season and a great shifting and a sending out and a launching forth for you. God says, even the business ideas that you have, God says, they shall move and I shall blow on it says the Lord. God says you just stay in that place of prayer. I see you 5 a.m. in the morning seeking the Lord and calling upon the name of God. You love to pray and God says because of that I love to answer. Because you love to pray I love to answer says God. So God says get ready for I shall blow upon you in this season. The Lord says get ready. Hallelujah. Father, we honor you and we thank you for this time to speak this word to this nation, to speak the word, this word to your people. We thank you that you are awakening your church, you are awakening your bride, and we give you glory. Those that have your Bible, let's go to St. Matthew's, the 27th chapter, the 45th verse through the 53rd verse. That is St. Matthew's, the 27th chapter, verse 45 through the 53rd verse. I want to give honor to my leader, Apostle Carolyn Sullivan. I honor you. I honor my wife, Prophetess Janice Moore Neesmith. We honor you today. We give honor. I thank you. It's an honor and a privilege. Woman of God, Prophetess, Apostle Angela Robeson, thank you for having me. I give honor to the Cross TV Network, and thank you for having me. Hallelujah. The Bible reads, now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sachpatani. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Some of them that stood there when they heard that said, this man calleth for Elias, which we know is Elijah. And straightway, one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar, put it on a reed and gave him to drink. The rest said, let be, let us see whether Elias will come to save him. Jesus, when he had cried with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost, and behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose <laughs> and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. My subject today is the earth did quake. For a subtopic, the awakening crisis. The prophetic word, people of God, that are in the voices of kingdom men, prophets, apostles, the prophetic word that has been going out in this season is awakening. A lot of revivalists in this hour, they're saying awakening and they're crying out to the church that we are in a season of awakening. So to our generation, this may sound fresh, this may sound awesome. This sounds amazing that God is positioning his church to rise to another place of prominence. 
But however, to the generations coming behind us, this is a travesty. Because for the generation coming behind us, this is an indictment against the church. If the church started out over 2,000 years ago, people of God, where God awakened his church and his kingdom and birthed out a mighty church, why now are we at the sixth awakening? The first great awakening we saw was in 1740. And it lasted until 1790. And it was said that one out of ten people attended church. Chief Justice John Marshall told Bishop Madison, the church is too far gone ever to be redeemed. In 30 years' time, Christianity will be forgotten. Hence, another revival emerged, which was the second great awakening, which sparked repentance. It sparked prayer in the church. Then the bride became sluggish again. And then we had another awakening. Then we had the fourth awakening, which started a few miles from here at Azusa Street. And I love this one, people of God. I love this particular awakening because history tells me that there was a man by the name of William Seymour. And he stood at the door and he listened as they taught on the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And he stood at this door and he listened how Charles Parham would talk about being baptized in the Holy Ghost. And he would listen for weeks. And William Seymour, as he would listen for weeks, he would take what he would learn and he started his own prayer. But the funny thing to me is the fact that he was at the door and couldn't go inside. How many of you know, people of God, what God is doing in this hour? It will be those. It will be the outcasts. It will be the rejected, uh, those that are not a part of the clique, uh, those that are not a part of the denomination, uh, those that are not a part of the network, uh, it will be those uh, that are just standing at the door, uh, they're going to pick up words and wisdom from God, uh, and they're going to pray and cry out to God, uh, and it's going to be those that God raised up uh, to loosen awakening in the earth. He stood at the door and would listen, people of God, uh, and was not invited on the inside. Uh, but how many of you know uh, that Jesus says, I am the door? Uh, people of God, uh, you don't have to wait uh, for an invitation by man. Uh, you don't have to wait to be upon their click. Uh, but if you stand uh, and you lean on Jesus, uh, Jesus Christ says, I am the door. Uh, and I have the proper doors for you to walk in if you let me. Uh, people of God, if you just lean on Jesus... Uh, He's the one uh, that would open every door that he ordained that you would walk in. Hallelujah. It's the outcast, the rejected. Those that are not part of the clique, but they're seeking God in this hour. Then we had a fifth, and now we embark on the sixth great awakening. God does not have sleep apnea. So why does his bride... The Bible lets us know that God never sleeps nor slumbers. So why are we introducing to the church uh, what God introduced to the church when it first started? Uh, we are introducing apostolic ministry uh, and we're going around the world uh, and we see a great emergence uh, of apostles and prophets uh, that they're now pioneering uh, something that the apostles pioneered uh, when the church began. Uh, our church was sparked uh, and birthed by apostles uh, that pioneered this message uh, and they took the kingdom to the known world at that, at that time. So 2000 years ago we are introducing apostolic ministry we are introducing the words like reformation people of God but we already had a great reformation why does it seem that the church is going around in circles so the mere fact that the cry in the land is awakening that means that there is a segment of the church that is sleeping evangelism has fell asleep in our local churches. Everybody today is an apostle or a prophet. Where are the evangelists? Where are they? Where are the evangelists? We're living in an hour, people of God. We're living in an hour where everybody is a leader to leaders. Everybody is just talking to the church. So if everybody is a leader to leaders, what about the body of Christ? Who is leading them? If everybody's leading leaders, who is leading the, the world? Who is leading those that's in the pews if we keep just ministering to each other? Hallelujah. 
There's so much of the foundation of the church that has fell asleep. We don't hear words no more like consecration. We don't hear words no more like sanctification. We don't hear words no more like purification and selling out and surrendering to God and holiness and righteousness, preaching about the cross and the blood of Jesus. These words are outdated. They're like a dinosaur in the church today. This is why the glory has put his hands up and tiptoed out the church because of the foundation of the church. We have removed them out of the church. People of God, this is an hour where we must seek God with a fervent. There is a generation rising that is seeking the face of God again, and they're going to have balance. They're not going to teach holiness without grace, and they're not going to teach grace without holiness. There is coming a balance to God's church. They're not going to, what we're going to do in this season, people of God, God's church is going to be awakened, but it's going to be awakened balance. The awakening that we are crying out for will only only come when the bride of Christ gets back on her knees in prayer. There is such a cry for prayer in this hour. Every great awakening was birthed by burning ones, sent ones that started out in prayer, who prayed until the fire fell. Let's do a brief history of the bride. Let's show how from Azusa, how she transitioned. People of God, the bride, oh yes, the bride of Christ. Right there on Bonnie Bray Street, uh, she began to seek God until she, she became emblazed in fire. The church got on fire. The church started going around the world. And Pentecostal flames, it began to take uh, it began to take over the world. The bride, people of God, she began to uh, carry um, tent meetings. And she began to see the, the, the sick healed. She began to see signs and wonders. The bride, she was rising up. People of God, she went from tent meetings to now packing out coliseums. Oh yes, she went from coliseums to birthing out mega churches. Oh yes, the bride what did she do? She began to go on TV and all type of Christian networks and begin to preach to the world with fire. Oh yes, she became into itinerant ministry and she began to preach all around the world. Oh yes, the bride. My God, she began to make money and sell her tapes and sell her DVDs. Oh yes, she became glamorous and powerful. So all of a sudden, people of God, when the bride, when she became this great celebrity when she became this great person she no longer had time to pray no more she had too many she had too much time being on tv she couldn't pray no more she had too much time going to this nation and this state she couldn't pray no more oh what got her to the place of power she put it down people of god the only way america is going to get on fire again is if we get back to that place of prayer if we get back to that place of fasting. Oh, I know you thought I was going to come on TV and give you a feel-good message. I come today as a prophet of the Lord to tell America to get back on her knees. That's the only way we will see an awakening in America. Hallelujah. It is through prayer. It is through intercession, people of God. This is what births power in God's people. Say the earth did quake. The earth did quake. Notice, I didn't say the church, but the earth. There are some saints uh, that God is raising up in this hour uh, and he is preparing them to shake the earth. Uh, he is preparing a generation. Uh, if you look at Ephesians, yes, Lord, uh, if you look at Ephesians, uh, what did Apostle Paul, what did he say? Uh, he began to break down the mind of God concerning the government of God. Uh, and he said, and God gave some apostles uh, and some prophets uh, and some evangelists uh, and some teachers uh, for the what? 
and some pastors for the perfecting of the saints so that the saints work the work of the ministry. But we've been having the saints sitting down uh, watching the government just work the, the work of ministry. But people of God, there is coming a day uh, where the saints of God uh, is going to get filled with power and they are going to lay hands on the sick uh, and watch them recover. They are going to go forth in power. God is raising up apostolic ministry that's going to equip the body uh, to go forth as one body in the earth. Uh, no, no, no today. Uh, no today that God is preparing you. Uh, he's preparing you to rise up. Uh, he's preparing you to come forth uh, and he's going to put glory on your life. Hallelujah. The reformers and the revivalists, those will be the ones that will awake the church, but it will be the saints that was going to make the earth shake. It's going to be the saints. We can't go where you can go. It's going to be the saints that God is raising up, people of God, that's going to shake their neighborhoods. It's going to be the saints that's going to shake whole regions. It's going to be the saints that's going to shake America. It's going to be the saints, yes, that's going to shake nations. It's going to be the saints that's going to shake the world. I know everybody just wants to do it by themselves. They want to be great all by themselves, but God says, my body, I'm raising up my body to do it. It's not going to be one man. It's not going to be two, but it's going to be his body. There are two different people sitting in every church, Corey. The activated and the aggravated. Let me say that again. There are two distinct people, woman of God, sitting in every church. The activated, the ones full of action, where we get the word acts from. Acts of the apostles who were activated by the Holy Ghost. They are activated. They are in the earth and their mindset is to fulfill the destiny that God has put upon the Christian church. They are activated and filled with destiny to fulfill purpose. Their mindset is purpose. But then you have another group in the church and these are the aggravated. Those with an inkling that there's more. Those that's sitting there knowing I've been sitting here for years, way past my time of birthing. I've been sitting here for years and I know that there's something in me that I have to get out. There's an inkling in me that there's more and they've been aggravated. But I'm here to tell the aggravated, baby, it's your time because you are about to go from aggravated to being activated by the power of God. And in this season, in this shifting and transition that God is doing with the church, you will be the ones that God would raise up and prepare to move in different dimensions and different spheres for the glory of God. There's two particular people sitting in every church. People of God, there is a huge problem prophetically that I am seeing in the body of Christ and that is that we have become a secret society a secret society is an organization where their matters their convening their conferences are amongst each other and the outside world doesn't have a clue what's going on on the inside See, we thought when God said, come out from amongst them and be ye separate. We thought that was come out from amongst them and turn up our nose to the world. But baby, no. It was come out from amongst them, get separate, get consecrated, get Jesus on the inside that you would go back and change a generation. And get people out just like he got you out. Understand something, people of God. We have become a secret society. But God says to go into disciple nations. God said for us that we are the light of the world. He never said that we are the light of 
the church. He said we are the light of the world. People of God, no, no, no. A city set on a hill, it cannot be hid. I want to tell the church today, stop hiding. Stop hiding all that light and that power that you have on inside the church. Take that power to the world. Why, why, why? You sit there and wait for your leader to put a microphone in your hand. Take your microphone, your mouth, and go to all the world and tell them about your Jesus. Tell them about your God. Take that power to the world. Hallelujah. Stop hiding. Isaiah 51 and 9, it reads, Awake, awake, put on strength, O arm of the Lord. Awake, as in the ancient days. The key word here is put on strength, which denotes the fact that if we can put on strength, we can also take it off. Israel took off her strength and went to sleep. That's why God said awake. Listen, listen, listen. The only way for the bride to awake is for her not to go to sleep, but for her to die. The only thing that is going to bring revival and an awakening to this great state is the body of Christ dying to their flesh. And the greatest example of awakening that we saw in Scripture was Jesus. He gives us the perfect example of what dying to the flesh would birth. The Bible lets us know that when Jesus Christ was born, that wise men came from the east. And when they came, they came bearing gifts. And men of God, they gave them, one of the gifts they gave them was gold, which was symbolic of his divinity. They gave him frankincense, which was his, symbolic of his willingness to be a sacrifice. They gave him myrrh. It was symbolic of bitterness, suffering, and affliction. So these gifts was to keep him focused on his destiny. In this hour, we focus on our gifts instead of focusing on our, purpo on our purpose. We focus on our gifts. Why would they give, I ask this question all the time, why would they give a baby these types of gifts? He's a baby. Because usually we give babies toys. Why would they give him this type of gift? And God says the reason that they gave my son these type of gifts was not only to keep him focused, but it was to let Jesus Christ know, you didn't come in the earth to play with toys. You came to awaken a kingdom. You came to die and to be buried and to resurrect with power. The church wants to see resurrection power, but we miss the first two steps. We don't want to go through the death process. If we get past the death process, a lot of us mess up, and this is where I messed up in the past. We don't want to go through the burial process. Now, there's a difference. Whereby after you die out of the, from your flesh, you stay dead. You stay buried. You keep your flesh under subjection. You put nails in the coffin. This is why Paul said, I die daily. Because what he is saying is, my death today is not contingent on my death tomorrow. I have to kill my flesh tomorrow just like I did today. You can get surrendered for years and give up room for your flesh to wake back up. The word crucifixion, it means the execution of a person by nailing or binding them to a cross. Jesus was on the cross for hours until he died. Then and only then did he rise with resurrection power. He was alive until he died. A lot of Christians are binded to Christianity. They are binded to religion. They are binded to a faith, but won't die or surrender to Jesus. Death is what births the resurrection power, people of God. I know this is not a popular message huh, to come on TV talking about dying out to the flesh. Huh, but Paul stated in 1 Corinthians 2 and 2, For I resolve to know nothing except Jesus Christ huh, and him crucified. Huh. So what you want me to do, huh, there is only one way huh, for the church to awaken. Huh, and that is through a death walk. Huh, because understand something, people of God. Huh, we serve a living God. Huh, we serve 
a living God. And God is tired of his church going to sleep and waking up and going to sleep and waking up. We are now at the sixth awakening. We are now at the sixth. And I propose it to be the last because we are not going to fall asleep again. But God is going to charge his church to stay up and to declare the word of the Lord and to release a nation that is held captive by the the, 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 the demand of hell. No longer do we fall asleep again, people of God. The Bible states in St. Matthew's, the 27th verse, the 27th chapter and the 45th verse, now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over the land until the ninth hour. Don't be dismayed at the darkness in the land. Before there is a ninth hour, nine always represents birth. There is always darkness in the land before great birthing. We see it all throughout history. At the ninth hour, Jesus, he cried out with a loud voice. It was time for the birthing of a church. It was the dawn of an awakening, people of God. And Jesus cried out, what woman in her ninth month giving birth doesn't scream out with a loud voice? There's pain. There's travail. There's hurt. She's blaming the one who got her pregnant. So here we see Jesus at the ninth hour. He's about to birth salvation. He's about to birth a kingdom. It's all through death. And he screams out to the one who impregnated him with the church. Eli, Lama, Sashbatani, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? People of God, understand one thing. When you're fasting, what does your flesh do? He cries out to you the same thing. That hunger that you have, that hunger is your flesh crying out to you. Why are you forsaking me, fool? Why are you forsaking me? That's what happens when you fast. That's what happens when you die out to the flesh. But let that flesh die. There is a greater glory on the other side. There's something very peculiar in this particular passage of Scripture. There are a few verses of Scripture in Aramaic in the Bible. And this is one. Listen, listen, listen. The Aramaic translation is different from the Greek. And it reads, my God, my God, for this I was kept. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus says in Aramaic, for this I was kept. So Jesus is saying, I was born for this very hour. I was born for such a time as this. To die so that generations may live. He died so that generations may live. So that generations would awake. So that generations would know. And he gave them purpose through his death. Understand, let me say that again, people of God. Understand what Christ did. He died that generations can be awakened by his resurrection power. I declare to you today, I declare to you on TV land, as a prophet of the Lord, for this very hour was you kept. For this very hour, you have been preserved. God has preserved you for this hour. That's why it couldn't kill you what you've been through. That's why the divorce couldn't kill you. That's why... That disease couldn't take you out because of this very hour. God has kept you to transform the world with what he's doing in your life. Hallelujah. For this hour were you preserved. You have been called for such a time as this. To awake, move, and shake the earth. It will only come from a greater death walk, people of God, a deeper surrender. That is the only thing that's going to shake the earth. After Jesus died, verse 51 to 53, and behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent, and the graves was open, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose, and many bodies of the saints which slept, arose, and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many. 
It doesn't say Jerusalem quaked. It doesn't say Bethlehem quaked. People of God, his death made the whole earth shake. His death, it made the whole earth shake. If you die out to the will of God and your plans, God will put a glory on you that will begin to shake nations, that will begin to make the earth shake by your death. If you follow the example of Jesus, you're about to make the earth quake, people of God. This is an hour where God is going to shake the earth again with his glory, with signs and wonders, with revival, with power, but it's only coming out to those that's willing to die because if you die, then and only then are you really living. Hallelujah. No, people of God, his death, it made the graves open. And the Bible says many bodies of the saints which slept arose. This awakening that you're going to birth is going to raise the body of Christ from sleep. Bodies of saints which are sleeping, they're going to rise because of your death walk. The bodies of the saints, not sinners, but the saints it says. The Bible says that it rose up saints that were sleeping. Many, not one, whole neighborhoods, not just the church, whole nations. Uh, not just the church, uh, whole continents. Uh, the earth is about to quake again. Uh, so get ready, people of God. Uh, get ready. Uh, get ready for this hour. You have been called and chosen. See, when you die and you get buried and you come forth with resurrection power, that's not just an anointing. That's glory. There is a difference between the anointing and the glory. There's a difference between a vessel that transforms their day and a vessel that transforms generations. What Jesus did at Calvary, it transformed every generation after. People of God, Paul, we're still reading about the exploits of Paul. We're still talking about the exploits of Paul. We're still talking about the exploits of William Seymour. We're still talking about the exploits of Smith Wigglesworth and Catherine Kuhlman and John G. Lake. They are just effective in their death as they was when they was living. That is glory. They are just effective in their death as they was when they was living. And you want to know why, people of God? Because when they was living, they chose to die. Oh, yes. When they was living, they chose to die. So now that they are dead, their works are living. Oh, you don't hear me today. Jesus fasted and prayed. Listen, Jesus fasted and prayed, people of God, and he came forth with power. He came forth with an anointing. And the Bible lets us know that there was a man named Lazarus who died. And Jesus' power, it was able to raise Lazarus from the dead. That is awesome. That is power but what happened when Jesus died there was a different glory on him he didn't raise one person but the Bible says that many many from many generations they awoke and came up from the grave that's the difference between anointing and glory his anointing rose one person from the dead but his glory after he died it awoke generations there's a difference. When he died, the Bible says generations of saints that slept instantly arose from sleep. There's a difference. That's glory, baby. That's glory. The world thinks the church is dead. They say we're not relevant no more. Baby, she's just sleeping. With an anointing, you will be known in your day. And what I mean by that is we know many men and women of God, that in their day, they have done great works. They have transformed lives and neighborhoods and people. They have done great things, but they're not known after their day. They're known in their day. But then we have those that their works were so powerful that we chronicle it. We chronicleize their works. We have it. We know everything they did. There's history. They are just as much alive in their death as they was when they was alive. That's the difference of glory. That's the difference of dying out, people of God. That's the difference of what Christ wants to do with his body in this season.
Hallelujah. No, people of God. No, as we close. There's one more story in the Bible. Woman of God. The Bible tells me there was a man by the name of Jarius. He was a ruler of the synagogue. He was a ruler of the synagogue. A ruler of the synagogue means that he was a rabbi. Oh yes, he was a rabbi and his daughter died. His daughter died. He's a ruler of the synagogue. He's a rabbi. So in our time that's equivalent to being an apostle or a pastor of a church. But the problem I have with Jairus is you're a ruler of the synagogue but you can't rule in the spirit realm to bring your daughter back to life. He needed to go to Jesus. He needed to go to Jesus. What's the need for me to be an apostle? What's the need for me to be a pastor? And I can't bring my sons. I can't bring my daughters back into health. He goes to Jesus and Jesus says something so powerful to him. Jesus says, she's not dead. She's just sleeping. Talitha Kumai made a rise. Talitha Kumai made a rise. I say to the body of Christ today, I say to the body of Christ tonight, Talitha Kumai, you are about to rise. You are not dead. You are just sleeping. You have just become complacent with church coming in at 11 and leaving at 1 p.m. You have just become complacent with coming in church and hearing your leader, but then going and watching watching the Super Bowl and TV uh, and not transforming nations or your neighborhood. Uh, you have just become complacent. Uh, but I'm here to tell the church today uh, that you are just sleeping. Uh, you are not dead. Uh, and God, uh, the prophetic word uh, to his body uh, is to lead the Kumai. Uh, May the rise. Uh, rise, bride of Christ. Uh, rise. Uh, because this is an hour where I'm going to do great exploits uh, if you rise for me. Hallelujah. Stand to your feet. Oh, yes. La can me le be curendi di o she. Le zikata bakar be tell me hin. Lu zikata re veska tans kaharin di di andele le be kiadal. Lo zan da da de mel mi hin mahara maholindo. For even. But even God says even now, for if I get a people, if I get a people that will surrender, watch what I will do. For there is a cry in the spirit realm, who will go for me, says God, who will go for me. There is a cry in the spirit realm, who will go for me, for I will use you in dimensions you, you know not of. For there are even mantles in heaven that have not been released yet, says God. There is glory that has not been released yet, but there is an hour. And there is a people that will die out to their will and do it as I have ordained. God says, oh, if you know me, you will know that I am a patient God. I will wait until a generation gets it right. I will wait. I will pass on this generation and I will wait for the next. No, no, no. God is patient. One day is a thousand years with me. A thousand years or is one day. So no, you have a place of grace, says the Lord. You have a space of grace to get in a place in me. And no, I will raise you up with power. I will raise you up with glory. I will raise you up with demonstration. I will raise you up with, with wealth. I will raise you up in this season. Get in my face, says the Lord. Get in my face. Get in my face, says God. Get in my face, America. Get in my face. You are worried about the White House, but worry about the one that sits on the throne. Worry about the one that has the power and the hand to change the heart of the king. Yes, Lord. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this season. We thank you for this transition. We thank you for your people, God, that you're raising up with glory. And God will say to you, Talitha Kumai, rise from your complacency. Rise from your bitterness. Rise from your lack of love. And love again. Love again and watch my glory spread around the earth. Love again and get into a place of prayer. Love again. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We give God some praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God.
Let them sing it, say. Forever all my days. Hallelujah. Sing hallelujah, our God. Hallelujah, our God. Forever all my days, oh God, sing hallelujah, 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 Sing it like you mean it, hallelujah. Lift your voices up, hallelujah. Forever all my days, hallelujah. One more time, everybody, hallelujah. Oh. Hallelujah. 